Our brother who asked two questions yesterday night is a job seeker. I think you're a truth seeker. Huh? He asked that, can you compare, when you compare Sikhism, Guru Granth Sahib, what are the similarities you found and did you find any differences in Sikhism? I did mention some points yesterday that as far as Sikhism, I told you yesterday that it was religion of 10 Gurus and was founded by Guru Nanak Sahib and the 10th Guru was Guru Gobind Sahib. It originated towards the end of the 15th century in the land of Punjab, the land of Fire Rivers. And Guru Nanak was very much influenced. He belonged to a Kshatriya family and was influenced by the Muslims. Therefore, you find many of the teachings are quite common. And scholars say it's an amalgamation of Islam and Hinduism. As far as the teachings are concerned, the basic Sikh comes from the root word Sisya, means a student, a seeker, a seeker of truth. Therefore, I told you, you are a seeker of truth, not a job seeker. And in Arabic, we say Talib. You know, Talib. Talib means a student, person who does Talab, who seeks. As far as the five Ks a Sikh is supposed to maintain in Sikhism, he has to maintain his Kesh, the uncut hair. He has to have a Kanga, a comb, to keep his hair clean. He has to wear a Kala, a bracelet, a metal bracelet. He has to keep a Kirpan, a dagger. I don't know whether you have one. No. The Dubai police won't allow you here. Huh? <laughs> and the fifth is the kacha, the underdogs, the long underdogs. So these are the five Ks that a Sikh should maintain. If you ask me similarities, some are right. Even the Prophet said that, you know, we have to keep an arm. It's sunnah. Therefore, when you go to Oman, most of the Omani has a dagger. Like the Sikh, Oman. You saw the Omani. So, you know, because they said sunnah, fine. A Prophet said that you be prepared, always have open, help you in self-defense. So it's matching. Though it's not a fard, it is sunnah. In Sikhism, it's a fard. So that the difference is there. As far as uncut hair, our religion doesn't say that you should cut or should not cut. So there are many teachings which are similar. Some are different. Some are optional. As far as I told you yesterday, that regarding the basic concept of God, I feel it is almost similar. The concept of God in Sikhism, and the concept of God in Islam is almost similar. And as I told you yesterday, that the first verse of the Guru Granth Sahib, Adi Granth, that is the Japuji, first volume, first verse says that the God is true. He is the creator, the unbegotten, free from fear and want, great, compassionate. This is similar to the concept of God in Islam, of Surah class. And Sikhism is a monotheistic religion, which believes in one God, it is against Autarvada. It does not believe in idol worship. And in the unmanifest form, Almighty God is called as Ek Omkara, and manifest form as Omkara. And there are various attributes, what I mentioned yesterday of the similarities. Many attributes given to Almighty God in the Guru Granth Sahib and Sikhism is the same as in Islam. Almighty God is called as Akal, that's eternal. He is called as Sahib, that's Lord. He's called as Kartar, that is Creator. He's called as Parvardigar, that's the Cherisher. He's called as Rahim, the Merciful. He's called as Kareem, the Beneficent. He's also called as Vahe Guru, the One True God. Now what we realize as far as Sikhism is concerned, as I mentioned, it's an amalgamation, as the scholars say, of Hinduism and Islam. There are many points which are similar. What is not there, because it's a religion that came after Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's one of the new religions. There are very few religions that came after it. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So therefore, it does not mention about the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. All the other religious scriptures that you find, Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, they mention about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, Sikhism, because it's a new religion, it came after the demise of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's no mention that I came across about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As far as Islam is concerned, the basic two points to be noted. After believing that there's only one God who deserves worship and obedience, besides that, you also have to believe in the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Though Guru Nanak did respect Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did praise him, but I don't know of any scripture where he mentioned him as the messenger. 
So this is one point which I feel is which is then the other scriptures of the other religions. Where it's clearly mentioned, besides believing in one God, besides believing Tawheed, about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is not mentioned in the Sikh scriptures. And the practice of Sikhism has deviated and have gone on the wrong track, as I said, that they worship the Guru Granth Sahib, the Adi Granth, which was not told by Guru Nanak. Neither worshipping the fire has been told. So what we realize is that all these are interpolations that have come. And many of the acts of Hinduism have crept into Sikhism and that's how you have a different religion. But what we say Quran is the Furqan, is the criteria to judge right from wrong. Whatever matches with the Quran we say, we have no objection accepting as the word of God. Which contradicts we say is wrong. What does not match and does not contradict we say maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. Hope that answers the question. Well.